Breath of Life presents Experience the Power with Walter L. Pearson, Jr. Today, Pastor Pearson's message is entitled, To the Glory of God. We've got a subject that I think you will find interesting. Interesting. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Somebody already asked, what is this to the glory of God? Well, let me, let me warn you a little bit. This sermon used to be traumatic until science caught up with the Bible. Did you hear the way I said that? You see, some people think that the cutting edge of science is way ahead of the Word of God. You'd be surprised to know that God, who invented all of this, who holds the world in the palm of his hand, knows far more than most people imagine. In fact, they think that scientists are ahead of God let me assure you that God gives the information to the scientists. So uh, scientists finally caught up. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I want to read in your hearing verses 19 and 20. And here's what the Bible says. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we are so grateful for what the Bible tells us that tonight we open it with expectation. And as we've read these amazing words that we are bought with a price. We ask, Father, that the Holy Spirit might continue to be with us, to guide us into all truth. Help us to recognize truth, to embrace truth, and we shall give glory and honor to the name of Jesus. It is in His name that we pray. Amen. So tonight, we start with what I think is one of those experience the power moments. The Bible says that we are bought with a price. Let's break that down. Whether you have embraced Jesus or not, and you know we began when we started this whole Experience the Power meeting series, we started by saying that we don't exclude people who don't think they're religious. Because God doesn't exclude people who don't think they're religious. You don't have to dress a certain way. You don't have to look holy for Jesus to love you. Before you were born, he already loved you. In fact, when we were born in rebellion, his love did not cease. It is an unconditional love. And he says, you are bought with a price. Now, that's, that's interesting because to some it might seem odd language but here is the case Jesus can claim me tonight first because he made me oh, well you say I understand the Adam and Eve thing preacher but how did he make you well he made me because without the spark of life that only Jesus can give I would never have been born alive I read some amazing literature a few months ago. It says that the, uh, the scientists have almost been able to put together every element of the human body. They, they have constructed practically everything that makes me, me. But this article said there's one little impediment. That is why they've got something that looks just like me. In fact, they could probably imitate the human body all the way down to the end. There's something that they don't have the power to do. And that's what Jesus did 
after he had formed Adam from the dust of the earth. Remember the Bible says he breathed into his nostrils. And you know I love to say this because it's, it's the name of the television show. The breath of life. I, you know, I've, I've read those beautiful poems that, that, that are so wonderful, but I can see it. I can see Jesus with dust forming a skeletal system, putting nerves around the bones artfully. And then he begins maybe with the, with the muscles and forms them in the right place, the right size and the right strength. And then he, he puts skin, the integumentary system. I read the article covers it with skin but see there must have been some special places can you imagine what it was to see him form a little ball and press it into that socket that made an eye can you imagine what it was for him to form a tongue and put it right in there to 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 the extent that when he breathed into adam's nostrils Adam awakened, able to speak. Huh? If, if that's not a moment for you, I don't know what is. Because I believe that Jesus pulled that wonderful reflection of himself, pulled it up, faced it. And then can you imagine that moment? And he turns it loose. And instead of falling back down like something I would have made, this thing is animated by the power of the spark that only Jesus can give. So I don't care how far away from creation we are, you must understand that when a mother bears a child, whether she's at home or in a hospital, they've got all of those wonderful machines around, but there is no machine that can make that baby live. It is still the spark of life that Jesus gives. So he made us. But when, when the devil saw how fantastic the creation was, and when he was cast out of heaven down to the earth, he began to look at Adam and Eve and wonder how he could conquer them. So he beguiled them. And when Eve wandered away from her husband, I don't have time to stop there, but every wife ought to make note of that. You might want to stay close to the man because when you separate from each other, psychologically or physiologically there there comes a strain in the process Eve goes away encounters a serpent who can talk it is the devil talking through the serpent when she comes back to Adam he looks at her and knows that something's wrong every man in the audience knows what we should have done hmm Adam should have gone back to God. Eve, wait, stay right there. <laughs> Lord, something happened to her. She's not looking the same. And I don't know what it is, but I, I, you know, I got a few more ribs if you got the time. <laughs> but listen. When God put them together, he did a marvelous thing. You remember that when Adam saw Eve, he said it three times. This, 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 this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And even when she came back looking funny, he still loved her. She said, take a bite of this fruit. And he bit it. And we thought that mankind was lost. But the text says that he bought us. Jesus promised one day in the fullness of time. One day I will go to Calvary's cross and I will shed my blood so that this couple can live. So instead of dropping dead, like the Bible says, the wages of sin is death, Jesus promised his own blood 
So man did not die instantly, but man continued to live on the promise of Jesus Christ. I'll buy you with a price. The price is higher than anybody could pay except that God became man and shed his blood. So tonight we can declare there is power in the blood of Jesus. I, I, I used to ask my parents, you know, I wasn't old, but I was trying to think that thing through. I said, you know, did the Bible say the wages of sin is death? Yes. Well, didn't they sin? Yes. So I asked him, why didn't they drop dead? God doesn't lie. So why didn't Eve drop dead and Adam drop dead? And the answer is we are living on a borrowed life. We are living on the power that was first promised that kept us alive. Before the cross, we lived on the promise of Jesus. After the cross, we live on the power of Jesus' blood. But his word was powerful enough that even before he died, his word kept us alive. So tonight, your body is not your own. God owns it twice. He made you. Then when you were lost, he paid to get you back. So whoever you may think you are, you are bought with a price. Well, uh, let's move from the happy times for some, but let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Because, and look, incidentally, you've got to get that first part. That is the decoder for the rest of the sermon. If you forget that, you'll be lost. The decoder for the sermon is, you are not your own. You are Jesus' property twice. Made you, bought you, redeemed you. So, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And let's look at verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. And here's what, 31, forgive me. Here's what the Bible says. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, without the first text, the second one for some people would not make sense. Because people want to ask, we are in a generation of doubters. People want to know, what is this thing about God's sovereignty? Now, I don't question it. I'm grateful that I've read enough scriptures to know that Jesus is sovereign. So I don't question his requests or his commands because he made me and he redeemed me. So two times I am his. This text says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do. Now, whatever you do covers a lot. Hmm? covers a lot but whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do do everything to the glory of God because I am not my own so we've got the decoder everybody remembers it if you forget somebody will nudge you I hope and remind you now if that be so I believe that Jesus has the right to say what you ought to put into your body because as that little trite phrase goes you are what you eat and uh, don't get nervous this is not going to be a diet sermon not diet as in how much you eat I got a little thing I'll share with you in a minute about that uh, we come in different sizes huh? if you could wish yourself a size most of us would wish ourselves slim and trim but there are some of us who didn't come in that package and we struggled for the rest of our days to be svelte but that's not what this is about because the fact is that your eating habits in that sense diet those things are of interest to God let's start with basics 
You ought to care for your body because it doesn't belong to you. You ought not treat it like you think it ought to be treated because it is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know it's hard to believe that some of our bodies measure up because they don't necessarily look like temples. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> but if the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, you cannot treat your body in a nonchalant fashion. You can't be like young people generally are. Most young people think that life and health are resources that will never be exhausted. When I was young, I thought that strength was a given. I strutted and fretted and thought that I had the power to live forever. I remember a preacher came to the high school where I was and preached every night about people dying. He tried to frighten us into Jesus. <laughs> what he did not recognize is that young people, particularly then, before the horrors of drugs, we thought nothing could kill us. We lived with reckless abandon because it seemed like you could do anything you thought to do. You could jump as high as you imagined. You could run as fast as you chose to. It is only when you get to the end of your 30s <laughs> can we talk? I have a friend who says, and this gentleman is authorized to give an opinion, he's a physician, he says, when you reach 40, an amazing thing happens. You and your body have to reconcile what your life has been up until then. So all of your bad habits are brought to your attention, says he. This is not from the Bible. This is from a physician who, rather with a twinkle in his eye, says that young people don't understand that this thing can run out. I wish I could convince them it will never happen. They are just like I was. They don't believe it. When old people talk, they say, oh, he's just old. Don't, don't pay attention to him. He's an old man. But the old try to tell the young, preserve your strength. Don't do silly things. Because one day you'll reach back for the resource And it won't be there. So live in the prime of your youth. Glorify God in what you do. Because there'll come a day when there won't be as much left as you thought. Are we together? So here's some things you ought to do. And this is, this is not from the Bible. These things are from physicians. You ought to give yourself fresh air, sunlight. I, I, I was just reading this afternoon trying to kind of bone up quickly on a couple of things that I thought might be interesting. In sunlight for half an hour or 45 minutes, the sun does amazing things to your body. Now you can't stay out there forever, particularly during the hottest times of the day. There are dangers in being exposed to the sun without protection, but the sun should not be hidden from. Even though my tan is absolutely perfect, I need to get into the sun. So you ought to have sunlight. You ought to have rest. Let me pause there for a minute. Because now we live in a generation where nobody has time to rest. You've got more than 200 television channels. And some of us can never stop searching. <laughs> Gentlemen, you and I are the most horrible people when it comes to the remote. Your wife can barely get her hands on it. Your family tries to get it, but you've got it hidden somewhere. And you're always clicking, trying to find something else, and you find yourself up in the middle of the night still clicking through channels. And what I've got to tell you based on so much information is this, there's, there's nothing there. Sometimes the insides of your eyelids are better to watch than what's on television. <laughs> there are people who think that eight hours sleep is a joke. It is not. 
I read one scientist, a psychologist, who says, unless you sleep four and a half hours uninterrupted, your brain can't figure out which way is up. So you wake up with unresolved issues. Huh? And some people are wondering, why does life seem so strange? Go to sleep. <laughs> your brain is a marvelous, marvelous mechanism. It's, it's fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you just let it sleep, it can do marvelous things. It figures out what you did wrong before and what you ought to do tomorrow. But you can't just keep it up and up and up. Finally, it will put you into the netherworld. You will not know what to do. You got to rest. Then you've also got to have exercise. Oh, ho, ho. And, you know, this is really not enough. You heard the, you heard the doctor say last night, you, you've got two doctors, left leg, right leg got to use it. You've got to keep your body in motion. You've got to get air and pure water. And let me tell you, I, I have had the, the experience of being away from water. For those who have never had the challenge, you think that anything will quench your thirst. But if you ever get really thirsty, I was in a foreign country. I hadn't had all the shots. They told me, you can only drink bottled water on this trip. So I had enough to carry me for a few days. And I went and bought a little more where I traveled. But there came a day when I was away from the car, and I couldn't drink any water except bottled water. I couldn't buy any, couldn't find any. And when I got back to the car, the sun had been shining on my bottle. Are you there with me? So I reached for my bottle. Now I got to take it in. I'm so thirsty that the temperature doesn't matter. If I can just get it to the point where I can put it to my lips, it can be hot because I didn't want any juice. I didn't want anything sweet. My body craved water. Physicians say that your brain can't function properly without enough water. Do you know anybody who needs water? <laughs> your heart can't function properly. When I heard that, I got a supply. I went and got one of those filters and put it on my faucet. I got water, water everywhere now because I'm at the point where I am a little concerned that the heart keeps on beating in rhythm. And if what my heart needs is water, it shall have water. <laughs> That's what it takes. Those are basics. But then uh, you need to eat the freshest quality fruits, nuts, and grains. This is from the physicians now. I'm not trying to be a doctor. I'm just quoting what they say. You ought to eat some raw food every day. You ought to stay away from refined foods as much as possible. You ought to eat five or more servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Very few fast food establishments, very few serve fruits and vegetables. But you ought to eat five or more servings. You ought to eat green and yellow vegetables along with citrus and try to avoid animal fats because it's not good for the body. But let me tell you something. The Bible gets a little more involved than that. In fact, let me promise you that for a long time, God has been interested in what we eat. Can I go back a little bit? Is Genesis far back enough? Let me show you how Jesus began with our diet. Genesis chapter 1, that is the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, and let's look at a chronology of what happened. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, 
to you it shall be for meat. Don't let the word meat discomfort you. That does not mean it becomes meat. That's what you eat. Eat fruits, nuts, and whole grains. Can you imagine that God gave that diet to Adam and Eve? They had just come fresh from his hand. Join us next time for more of Pastor Pearson's message entitled, To the Glory of God. We'd all like to live healthier lives, but doing so and maintaining it aren't always so easy. It's hard when the foods we love are also the foods that can hurt us the most, and when it's easier to watch TV than it is to exercise. What we need are straight answers and some encouragement. The Breath of Life gift offer this week is Dr. Arnott's 24 Realistic Ways to Improve Your Health. It includes information that can change your life with just a little effort. So say goodbye to crazy diets and impossible exercise regimens. Dr. Arnott serves up a healthy dish of guidance to help get you to the physical and mental state God intended. Find out how to exercise the right way, how water can help your heart, why eating nuts and seeds daily is so important. Discover how to lower your blood pressure, reduce your risk of cancer, and about lifestyle changes that last. 24 Realistic Ways to Improve Your Health is indeed just that, realistic. Dr. Arnott is a no-nonsense, tell-it-like-it-really-is doctor who talks to you as if you're hearing from a good friend. Just call our toll-free number, 877-BOL-OFFER. That's 877-265-6333. And ask for your copy of 24 Realistic Ways to Improve Your Health. The book is yours for a gift of $5 or more. Or you may write to Breath of Life, P.O. Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. Don't just wait for your health to get better. Take charge of it and get 24 realistic ways to improve your health now. Thank you for watching Breath of Life. Pastor Walter Pearson hopes today's program has been a real blessing to you. To order a CD or audio cassette copy of this broadcast, just call our toll-free number at 1-877-BOL-OFFER. That's 1-877-265-6333. Or you may write to Breath of Life, P.O. Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. The CD or audio cassette is yours for a gift of $5 or more. If you'd like to purchase a DVD or VHS, just let us know and we'll send you an order form with a list of all the Breath of Life programs. Again, our toll-free number is 877-BOL-OFFER, 877-265-6333. Our address is Breath of Life, P.O. Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. Be sure to tell your family and friends about the Breath of Life television ministry. Thank you for your support and God bless.